Hey guys, welcome to Green Water Fish. So today I'll be talking about common illnesses that you'll see in freshwater fish or goldfish. This is actually one of the topics that one of my subscribers suggested and you know who you are and thank you so much for your suggestion because I think this is a great topic to talk about. Since this is such a big topic to cover, I thought it'll be better if I break it down so I can go a little bit more into detail for each section. So this video will be focusing on bacterial infection. So since this video will be mainly focusing on um, educational information about bacterial infection in freshwater fish, it'll not be a video focusing on treatment for bacterial infection. So please bear with me on that. Speaking of bacterial infection, um, it can exist externally on fish body um, that you can see very clearly with your eyes or it could be an internal infection, which means that the infection is actually inside of the fish, on multiple organs, or in a bloodstream, and it'll be a little bit difficult for you to see. And also bacterial infection sometimes coexist with fungal infection, so that's one thing that you need to keep in mind when you think about treating fish with potential bacterial infection. I broke things down according to different symptoms, um, so I thought that'll be a little bit easier to organize. So the first symptom that you may see sometimes is cotton or uh, fluffy things that you see on the external uh, fish body. Be quiet, Bertha. Hello? Are you going to be quiet or not? Hmm? I already gave you food. What do you want? Hmm? Do you want to say hi to everyone? Yeah? Okay, you'll be quiet, right? Promise? Yeah? I take that as a yeah. So you can see cotton-like uh, structures on the fish body. It could be on the fish body or it could be on thin. It could even be on their mouth sides. And typically it's usually whitish in color. It's fluffy. Um, looking kind of like cotton balls. Usually people think about fluffy and cotton things like it's usually caused by fungal infection but in reality it's also potentially likely that it's caused by bacterial infection. <sighs> Bertha. If it's a bacterial infection, it's usually caused by this bacteria called Flexibacter. And this is a gram-negative bacteria um, I don't want to go into technical details about gram-positive, gram-negative, or um, non-gram-positive or negative bacteria, but just keep in mind that gram-positive bacteria is different from gram-negative bacteria, and um, that also kind of directs you in a different direction when you select different medication to treat. So that's one symptom that you'll be able to see. The second symptom can involve fish's eye. The fish eye could look cloudy, looks like there is a thin film on the eye, or the fish eye could be popping out, looks like the fish has some sort of viral disease, like eyes like, like ping pong ball popping out. So those are also signs of bacterial infection. Those infections usually caused by fish fighting or aggressive breeding or um, careless handling. Those will likely cause a minor trauma on the surface of the eye. Bacteria can um, take the opportunity to infect the eye and sometimes you may have fluid accumulate inside of the eye that cause the eye to pop out. Most infection is usually caused by gram-positive bacteria, although gram-negative bacteria can also do that. The third symptom can involve fish spin. So the most common um, bacterial infected uh, symptom that people see is fin rot. The fin looks like it's been eaten away by something and there might be some sort of uh, redness color at a base. This is usually caused by gram-negative bacteria such as Pseudomonas. Um, however, fungal infection is very common to coexist in that condition as well. Another um, condition that involves fin manifestations is called hemorrhagic septicemia. Hemorrhagic means bleeding. Septicemia means that there is infection in the bloodline. So from that explanation, it sounds like kind of a serious condition and it is. Usually this is some sort of internal infection um, or 
infection that was superficial to begin with, but you didn't catch on it, or um, you didn't have time to treat, or the infection was very um, virulent and got into the bloodstream real fast. And this is a condition that's very hard to treat and you'll just have to wish for luck. But basically when you have hemorrhagic septicemia, you may see redness um, patches on the fin, you may see red streaks on the fin, but there is usually no skin damages that you can see. And similarly, this condition is usually caused by gram-negative bacteria such as Pseudomonas or Eremonas. The third symptom or manifestation of bacterial infection is sores or um, flesh getting eaten away. When you see open sores, it's pretty pretty easy to tell because it looks very nasty and you'll easily spot this patch of angry looking skin on the fish body. It's very hard to miss unless you don't pay attention to a fish for a very long time. And that is usually caused by eremonas. Or you may notice that the fish mouth looks like it's been eaten away. We sometimes call it mouth rot. Again, this is usually infected by gram-negative bacteria such as Pseudomonas eremonas, but it can be commonly caused by fungal infection as well at the same time. Similarly, you may see the flesh around the mouth um, is looks like it's got eaten away and the tail looks like it's rotting away as well. Again, uh, it's caused by the same bacteria and uh, the treatment will be pretty similar as well. And the last couple of infection signs will be a little bit more subtle than the um, other ones that I've already talked about. The fish can just look like very thin or we call it cachectic, meaning that it just looks like it's too skinny, it's unhealthy, that kind of a skinny. Or the fish may act listless, like swimming around, just just doesn't look right. Or the fish may have some sort of spasms like darting, spasming. So those can all be signs of bacterial infection. But it is also very likely that it can be caused by parasite infection as well. Although this is not a video of treatment of um, bacterial infection for freshwater fish, I do want to touch a little bit on the treatment options that's available on the market. There are a lot of products on the market and there is no way I can cover everything, but I just want to mention a couple of products in this video. The first product is made by API and they made Pimafix and Melafix. The important thing that you want to know is that Melafix is usually focused on gram-positive bacteria and Pimafix is usually focused on gram-negative bacteria and also have some sort of fungal infection coverage. And they state that those are natural ingredients and they're not antibiotics. So it's a little bit more natural for fish, but these tend to be a little bit weaker and you do have to use them pretty early on in the disease course, otherwise they will not be strong enough to fight the infection for you. One thing that I've heard about Pimafix is that people said that this product contains clove oil. I'm not sure if it's true, but it's just something that I've read about or heard about. So if that's something that concerns you, maybe you don't want to use that product, but I've used this product and I haven't had any issue with that. so. I wouldn't be worried about that. Another product that I've heard about on the market is made by Tetra. It's called Lifeguard. Um, they said it's a very broad spectrum um, medicine to cover bacterial infection. Also some other um, parasitic and fungal infection as well. Um, I haven't tried this product so I can't tell you too much about this product, but that's just something that I know. Similarly, Te Tetra also made another product called Fungus Guard. From the name, you will know that this medicine will be mainly targeting fungal infection. And as mentioned earlier in the video, a lot of diseases are caused by both fungal and gram-negative bacterial infection. So it is important to buy product that has both bacterial and fungal coverage. This is not a video telling you this product works great, that product sucks, but it's more of a um, educational video so that you know what is what kind of bacteria cause what kind of symptoms and what kind of bacterial infection is coexist with other um, like fungal infection, and then that'll tell you how to choose different medications to treat the condition properly. Some people will go an extra mile to maybe go to over the counter buy some sort of Neosporin or whatever antibiotics 
and um, I think it's okay to do um, if you know what you're doing uh, especially you are aware of the condition you are 100% sure that this antibiotics has coverage against this bacteria and you do have to be wary about um, how the antibiotics will go down the drain with your water change and that might have some sort of effect on the environment so um, so just be wary of that. So I think I covered everything that I want to talk about bacterial infection for freshwater fish or goldfish. If there's anything that you feel like I didn't cover in this video, please feel free to comment below. And I love to read all of you guys' comments. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and that means a lot to me. And please subscribe to my channel and I love you guys and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!